Hello everyone. My name is Isabella Ventura. I'm a nurse practitioner and administrative medical director at AIDS Healthcare Foundation in San Francisco and Oakland. And in this session, I will talk briefly about non-surgical body and facial modifications. And here's the outline for this talk. First, I will discuss some of the common reasons why transgender people and gender non-binary individuals practices facial and body modification. Then I will talk briefly about the advantages of non-surgical facial and body modification. And then I will list down the most common um, non-surgical facial and body feminization. And lastly, I will talk about the um, non-surgical facial and body masculinization. Please note that um, this is not a very extensive list. These are, this list is based on um, the common things that I observe in the clinic, um, the things that my friends and colleagues shared with me, as the internet searches, as well as from personal experience. The reasons behind facial and body modifications varies widely. Historically, people have been modifying their bodies for a variety of reasons for thousands of years. Reasons like aesthetic enhancement, self-identity and self-expressions, spiritual enlightenment, signifying social status, and or marking a major life milestone. But for many transgender and gender non-binary folks, facial and body modifications are a way to express ourselves on how and what we feel inside. We practice facial and body modification to match our gender expression. Another common reasons why many trans and gender non-binary folks practices facial and body modification is to conform to the binary gender expectations and society's standard on how a man or a woman should look like. And here are some of the common reasons why transgender and gender non-binary folks prefer non-surgical facial and body modifications compared to surgical interventions. The first one is most non-surgical facial and body modifications are less invasive or non-invasive. Um, they have minimal risk. There's less downtime, less time for preparations for procedures less complications, they are often temporary and semi-permanent, and lastly, affordability and accessibility of the procedures. This slide talks about non-surgical facial feminization. The first one is the use of Botox. This part, silicone, both medical and non-medical grade, and dermal fillers to create a more feminine aesthetics, to redefine the jawline, to contour the chin, the lip, and the forehead, and also to volumize the cheek, the lips, and the forehead. The second one is microneedling. Microneedling is a derma roller procedure that uses small needles to prick the skin. The purpose of this treatment is to generate new collagen, and skin tissue for a smoother, firmer, more toned skin. This treatment is also used for um, to get rid of scars and minimize the force. The next one is electrolysis, laser hair removal and shredding to remove the unwanted facial hair. And lastly, most transgender people um, have chemical fills uh, to minimize um, the force and to smooth skin texture. Ideally, this procedure must be done in a um, clinic 
by a licensed esthetician or a medical provider. This slide talks about non-surgical feminizing body modifications. The first one is padding. Padding refers to the use of undergarments to create an appearance of a larger breast, wider hips, and bigger buttocks. To achieve a feminine sil silhouette, transgender women use silicone breast form or bodysuits, butt and hip enhancer, or sometimes they use silicone camel toe. The next one is tucking. Tucking refers to the practice of pushing the penis and the testes between the legs so that they are not visible in tight clothing. Similar to padding, trans, some transgender women use body shapers and cors corsets to create a more feminine body shape. The next procedures are performed in spa or clinic. Um, body contouring using um, cool sculpting and laser body sculpting. Cool sculpting is an invasive procedure that uses cooling applicator to press away fat beneath the skin, while laser body sculpting is a minimally invasive procedure that uses laser to melt fat under the skin. And lastly, body hair removal using electrolysis laser hair removal, or by waxing. There are a number of transgender people, particularly transgender women, seek out illicit silicone injections for facial and body modifications. These are soft tissue fillers that are used to enhance the buttocks, breasts, face, and other body parts. It contains unknown substances including cement glue, aircraft lubricant, tire sealant, mineral oil, petroleum jelly, among many other unknown substances. It is usually administered by unlicensed individual who may or may not receive formal training. Pumping parties is a term commonly used in the transgender communities. It is an event or activities usually done in apartment or hotel room in which transgender people gather to be injected with silicone. There is a documentary titled Dying to be a Woman that discusses the danger of silicon use. It was created by Media Arts for Social Justice with Trans Latina Coalition in 2011. Illicit silicone injection can cause serious injuries, disfigurement, and death. So it is important that we educate our patients, our clients, about the danger of illicit silicone injections. In 2019, Dr. Chloe Bertin et al. wrote an article about illicit silicone injection. The article is based on a study conducted in Paris, France. And in this slide, shows some of their findings. As you can see, there are many complications of illicit silicon injections, such as edema, erythema, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, DBT, and migration. Almost every year, there are news about the danger of illicit silicon injection in the United States. And here are some that made headlines. And now I'm going to talk about non-surgical facial masculinization. Similar to transgender female, transgender males seek out Botox, Dysport, and dermal fillers to create a more masculine appearance. Uh, to redefine the jaw, creating a more square shape, to contour the chin and the forehead. Hair transplantation is also co a common facial modification for transgender men, particularly individuals who experience hair loss due to testosterone treatment. There are two common practices for non-surgical masculinizing body modifications. The first one is chest binding. Chest binding involves wearing a tight clothing, 
bandages or compression garments to flatten out the chest. Many online stores sell trans tape. They are much better and safer for the skin than the regular duct tape. Oftentimes, they do not have harsh chemicals. The next common body modification for transgender men is packing. Packing is a practice of wearing a padding or pallet shaped object, sometimes called non plush penis, to give the appearance of having a penis and male bulge. Here are some of the online resources that I use for this presentation. The first one is Transcare BC. They have really good information on padding, tacking, chest binding, and packing. They even have videos on their website. The second one is the uh, University of California, San Francisco Transgender Care. And the third one is um, Dr. Sarah Tong's YouTube channel on non-surgical facial feminization. And lastly, trans tape tutorials which also you'll find on the um, YouTube channel. And here's the slide for references. Thank you for listening on my presentation titled Non-Surgical Facial and Body Modifications. For feedback and questions about this presentation, please contact and reach out to me at isabellaventura at aidshealth.org. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the presentations.